Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Physicamente. Today I would like to talk about the Olbers paradox. This video has been asked me, so here is a video in English for you. The Olbers paradox is simply saying the following thing. Why in the night the sky appears completely dark despite there are an infinite number of stars in the universe? We can make an example to explain this situation. Let's imagine that we are walking in a wood and independently to where we are looking, sooner or later we are going to look Look at a tree. So if I am surrounded by trees that could be at different distances from me in the different directions, but sooner or later I will always meet a tree with my sight. It is impossible for me to see outside, but what matters is I should be able to see trees everywhere, exactly like I should see stars everywhere in the sky, even in the night. So to me the night sky would appear like a sunny day. The name of this paradox is coming from the German astronomer Olbers, who defined it in 1826. But uh, such a problem has been already known even before, because we have news from Kepler, from Newton and even from Halley, who left us some written about the same kind of problem. This paradox is based on three assumptions. That the universe is infinite and static, that the universe exists since an infinite amount of time and is not changing over time, that the universe is homogeneous and and isotrope. It means that uh, it is going to be looking the same everywhere in the universe and uh, if I look in every direction I expect to see exactly the same. So there is not a special direction where I see something different respect to all the other directions. Historically have been already several attempts to solve this paradox. The first one is saying that the stars that are farther away from me are also fainter. So I cannot pretend that all the stars together are going to emit so much light that are going to illuminate the night sky. This unfortunately is not true for a very simple reason. It's true that the stars that are farther away are going to look fainter to me. If I take a star and I measure the luminosity and now I pretend to take this star and bring it farther away from the Earth from a distance which is twice the original distance, then I'm going to see this star as four times fainter than the original brightness. But on the other hand, farther away I'm going to observe, more star I'm going to see. Just to give you an example, let's imagine to take this one cent coin as an hypothetical apparent surface that I can see in the sky, and let's imagine now that I take a two euro coin and I just place it right behind at the right distance. What you will see is that the apparent diameter of these two coins is going to be exactly the same. More or less, this diameter is half the diameter of the two euro coins, so it means that the distance of the two euro coins must be twice the distance of the one cent coin in order to match in size, but this means also that this volume is four times bigger than the volume of one cent coin, simply because this in diameter is twice the diameter of one cent. So summarizing things, the stars that are in this volume would look like four times fainter, but I have here four times more star, which means that the overall luminosity of stars that are farther away would look exactly the same like fewer stars that are closer to me. In the 17th century there was another attempt, saying that between the stars there are a lot of dust particles that looks brown to us, and this dust is going to absorb part of the light, so we don't receive all the lights from all the stars. But unfortunately this solution doesn't work from a thermodynamic point of view. The light that this dust could absorb would also rise up the temperature of this dust. So this dust at a given point would be hot and would start to emit light exactly like heating up a piece of iron, this would start to emit red light, also the dust would start to emit lights simply because it's getting warmer and warmer. So I will receive less light directly from the stars, but I would in any case start to see a universe full of really hot dust which is emitting light. So this solution is not really solving the problem of a dark night sky. Another attempt to explain this paradox was suggesting to think about that the light is not traveling at an infinite velocity. The speed of light is about 300,000 km per second, so this means that the light which is emitted from the stars that are farther, farther away could take some time to reach the Earth. But for some reasons this explanation was not really considered in the past centuries, maybe because everybody was absolutely sure that the universe was infinite, so there was enough 
time for any star in an independent distance from the Earth to emit light that would have reached the Earth. The modern solution to this paradox is actually considering this very last attempt. So we know that the universe is not infinite, we know that it's not existing since an infinite amount of time, so we know that at a given point stars have formed, so only from that very moment the light could have started to travel in our direction, so there is a kind of limit which is the biggest distance from which a star could have potentially started to emit light which is reaching now the Earth. So basically it's not true that there is an infinite amount of stars that can emit light, so we don't receive light even overnight from an infinite amount of stars. Another argument to solve of this paradox comes from the fact that the universe is not static, is actually expanding. For that, we know also that the farther away an object is, the faster is receding from us. So, for example, the bigger the distance from a galaxy from us, the bigger is going to be the velocity with which these galaxies are traveling far away from us. We know then that the light emitted by these galaxies is not going to look exactly the same to us, because due to the Doppler effect, this light is going to be red shifted. So the light that are emitted by this galaxy is going to be red shifted toward the reds, but also the infrareds and the microwaves. So a lot of light that is coming from the galaxies that are farther away from us is not going to be seenable with our naked eyes, simply because our eyes are not able to see infrareds, microwave nor radio waves. We can see only a specific range of lights which goes from the red to the blue and if all the light that is emitted by the farther away galaxies falls outside this range we cannot see it and that's the reason why with our eyes our nights looks dark. But please consider another thing. If our eyes would have been able to see some radiation outside this range between the red and the blue, and for example, if we could have been able to see the infrared and then the microwaves and maybe, why not, even the radio waves, what we would see is really a universe which is bright in every direction independently if it is night and day. What our eyes would see is what is called the cosmic microwave background, which is a completely uniform right radiation in microwave that we receive from any direction in the universe. We can consider this radiation as really the last echoes of the very very young universe when it was really really small, it was pretty hot and it was full of radiation, but because this light has been emitted almost 13 billions of years ago, it means that this sphere is also pretty pretty far away from us and this last emission of lights from a really hot universe has been traveling for the last 13 billions of years and now we can see it not with our eyes, but only as a microwave radiation. And that's why it is extremely, extremely weak. Perfect, that's what I wanted to tell you about the Olbers paradox. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, thumb up, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and see you next time.